Doc. I'm from the future. I came here in a time machine that you invented. Now I need your help to get back to the year 1985. You know I totally sympathize with Marty. I've been trying to get back to the year 1985 for years. <laughs> yeah, but the stupid 8 on the keyboard on the time machine sticks, so anything with an 8 in the year I never get to visit. Oh, hello, my name is uh, Fu Manchu. That's right. Now, speaking of Back to the Future, it is one of my all-time favorite movies of all time. Wait, did I say all time, all time? Anyways, you know what? It is. It is one of my favorite movies, and it makes my top ten list, and I absolutely love it. Now, when it comes to Back to the Future, much like Star Wars and Indiana Jones and stuff like that, well, I don't, you know, I, I used to, but I don't anymore. I don't pick individual movies and say, that one's my favorite of the series. No, I like the whole series. I don't care what anybody says. Pfft, whatever. But you know what? Back to the Future, I really love it, and I lump all three movies together, like I said, and um, I just really like it a lot. It's one of my all-time favorites, and yes, it's really high on the list with movies that I really love. Now, speaking of the movie, though, Michael J. Fox will always be somebody else, not just Marty McFly to me. He will always be Alex P. Keaton, because when I, you know, used to watch him when I was, you know, younger, he was always Alex P. Keaton on Family Ties, and then all of a sudden he was Marty McFly, and that took over, and then it was Marty McFly, but it's still Alex to me, so, Michael, you're still Alex and Marty, so you know what? Hey, if you're not doing anything, give me a call. I'll take you back to 1985, because I have a time machine, too. So anytime you need a ride, we'll have to go to 1979 and wait a few years, because, like I said, the stupid eight sticks on the... But you know what? Anyways, that brings us to today's review. And I have been dying to open this thing. I got this thing, like, four days ago, and then I had to jump into the future and then want to open it. Man, I'm sick of waiting. So anyways, without further ado, let's get to today's review. And that rhymes, so let's go, shall we? Today's review will be on the Hot Toys and Movie Masterpiece. Back to the Future! Marty McFly, one six scale figure. And that is awesome. And look at that cover. You know, I would have thought that they would have went with, a, you know, maybe the poster or whatever from the movie. Or maybe just a still or something of Michael J. Fox. But nope, they went with the, the time machine driving off into the distance, leaving a fiery trail that even Ghost Rider would like. And then there's the license plate there. And that is awesome! But you know what? I like this box a lot. It's, it's kind of plain, to be honest. Uh, the Marty McFly part here is very shiny. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but it's very, very shiny. And, uh... No, I mean, sort of shiny. I mean, it almost looks like it's made out of, like, glow-in-the-dark, uh, you know, that glow-in-the-dark paint or glow-in-the-dark, you know, ink or something. I don't know. But it kind of looks like the stuff that's on glow-in-the-dark posters. But, um, anyway, there you go. There's the front of the box. The side of the box just says Marty McFly with an arrow down there and up there, and it goes all the way down. And I say we look at the back of the box. What do you say? So here's the back of the box, and as you can see, it has the clock tower clock. And that is awesome. It's got the logo again, all the little warnings, the barcode. Now, this isn't the exclusive version. This is just the regular edition version because the exclusive's on a wait list or something. And I don't feel like waiting just for a guitar that he used for like three seconds in the movie. No, I mean, I, if it would have been that little V-neck guitar that he used at the beginning of the movie, or even the one he used when he was uh, back in time, 1955 or whatever, I would have really wanted it then. I would have really wanted that little tiny one, but... But, you know, I wish they'd have made that one. But maybe they'll make it later. Who knows? But anyway, there's the back of the box looking kind of boring. So let's look at the front one more time. You can totally tell that I'm in a hurry to want to see this. And I don't want to waste any more time. Heh. <laughs> Back to the Future joke. But anyway, I hope that you like this box because it's the last time you're going to be seeing it. So I say remove the flap. What do you say? Now, when you remove the lid from the box, you will find this little cover here that covers up the figure in this little plastic tomb. And there you go there. Looking pretty cool. Looking like the dash of the DeLorean. And at first I thought that said 1313. I was like, what What does that mean? But no, it's 88. I'm just an idiot. But you know what? I, it does. Does it not look like 1313? I don't know. But anyway, there you go. We're going to go through time. So let's go open the package. What do you say? Now, when you remove that little paper flap, you will find the following. The figure inside the little plastic bubble that Hot Toys puts their figures in. And that looks awesome. Even when it's obscured by all this plastic. His face is wrapped. He's in plastic. He's covered with plastic. Blah, 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 blah. It still looks awesome. So I say we lay him down and remove this top flap. What do you say? So here's the figure with the plastic.
plastic lid taken off of it. And as you can see, if we start down here, you will find the extra pegs that they give you all wrapped up. Some extra hands there. And then right there, you will see the clock tower newspaper. You'll see his Walkman radio or his little, well, they were called Walkmans, but it was just, I don't remember what brand that was. And then his skateboard is underneath there, which is awesome looking. You can barely see it poking out. There's his camcorder, or actually Doc Brown's camcorder. It's not his. And then over here, you will find Marty looking very awesome indeed. All wrapped up like Dexter tried to get him. Then there's some extra hands. There's his sunglasses right there that he wore in the poster and at the very beginning of the movie. And then there's his backpack looking like a real backpack from the 80s. That is awesome. So I say we stand Marty up and look at him. What do you say? Now, when you remove Marty from the package, this is how you will find him. His hands are wrapped. His head has plastic over it. Looks like there's a little bit there over his jacket. And then down here, his feet are wrapped, and obviously that's not his stand. So let's remove all that and see what he looks like. Now, once you remove all of that, you will find the Marty McFly looking very awesome indeed. Check him out. This is one awesome looking figure. Look at that! I mean, that's Michael J. Fox, if you ask me. That is so awesome. Now, I've wanted a good Marty figure for a long time, and this looks amazing. Now, one of the things you will note when you first see this figure in figure form, I and mean, when you see him laying there in the box, or when you pull him out, one of the things you will notice is how small he is. Now, Michael J. Fox is about, what, 5'4 in real life, so they made him really short. This figure's really, really short, man, so when you see it, you're going to go, wow, that's really little, man. Now, uh, some people have said that it's basically the same size as the Bruce Lee Hot Toys figures and stuff, and I've had a Bruce Lee figure, but I don't have one anymore, so I can't compare that, but it does seem about right, but he does seem a little thinner than Bruce Lee did, because Bruce Lee had at least muscles and pecs and stuff like that, so... I don't know, but uh, he, I think he looks amazing. And another thing that I noticed, too, is his clothes. Number one, that orange life preserver jacket thing, it feels like the real thing. When you feel it, it feels like the real kind of vests that they made. I mean, that's the kind of, I don't know, it just feels just like it. And then the denim of the jacket feels like a, you know, a blue jean jacket. I mean, they did a great job on this thing. Check them out, man. This is awesome. I've been waiting to get this figure ever since it was announced. I wanted one long before there ever was one. I just kept thinking, come on, man, make it, make it, make it. And now they've made one. Now, one of the things people complain about all the time is these little buttons. Just like the Star-Lord. If you're not careful, they can fall off. Now, Hot Toys has been doing this for a long time where they just glue these little buttons on. You know, because there's, I guess they couldn't, they don't want to, like, ruin the way the jacket looks by poking holes all the way through it and having, like, another button end on the other side of it where you look underneath there but I wish they would do that because they do fall off easy now I'm going to be very careful with mine I haven't had any problems with my Star Lord figure with any of the buttons falling off but as you can see look there's one on his pants there's some up his blue jean jacket there's some on the orange part there there's some on the orange part over here they're everywhere so you have to be really careful when you handle this thing he looks amazing I absolutely love this head sculpt and, you know, people criticize everything online, and they say, oh, it doesn't look like Michael J. Fox. It doesn't look like him from every angle. It, well, whatever! I don't care anymore. You people can't be reliable uh, for a source of information because, because honestly, I think this looks just like him. It's got his expression. It's got his personality. It captures who he is in the movie. You know, people saying things like, oh, the hair's not right, or, oh, you know, if you look at him over here, it looks like him, but if you look at him right here, it doesn't look like him. Okay, whatever. I don't care what you say anymore. I like it. It looks awesome. And especially, you know, like I like they say, the cliche, if, if you see it in person, it looks even better than it does in photos or online. And they captured every detail of this thing. And what's really cool about it is in the movie, you will notice that he doesn't always wear the orange, you know, life preserver thing. And he doesn't always wear the blue jean jacket. But then he doesn't always wear the, the shirt either. So... Technically, you could take off layers and have different versions of him all through the movie, and I think that is awesome. Very cool indeed. And then down here at his shoes, they're supposed to be Nikes. They don't have the little logos. A lot of people say that in reviews that, you know, they could, could, didn't get the rights for the logos on all the different stuff, like the JVC camcorder or whatever it is, and 
you know, all the different things, the stuff on the skateboard. See, it's supposed to have the little red swoosh right there on the thing. But you know what? I could care less. I think it looks awesome. I mean, really? In the, in the, in the age where people complain about product placement in movies... And then all these silly people online saying, Oh, we got to have that product placement on our toys. You know what? Hey, you didn't want the product placement in the movies. Now you want it on your toys. Live with it, people. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you know what they do? They uh, There's certain companies out there now that make decals and or something. I think they're just uh, like almost like water tattoos that you can put on the, the thing. You cut them out yourself and you put them on now. It just seems a little too complicated for me. I just don't think I would have the skill to be able to cut them out and put them on perfectly and stuff like that. But, you know, if anybody else can, hey, you can do mine too if you want to. <laughs> but, yeah, because, I mean, honestly, I've seen them with the decals on the shoes, and it makes it look so much better. The decals on the skateboard, the decals on the camcorder, all that, it just looks so much better. This figure is amazing. He looks so good. So... I was going to uh, show off a few more of the accessories, but, you know, honestly, there's too many reviews of this thing already. I'm already at 11 minutes, so I'm just going to show the close-up of him. And believe me, if you've seen one review of this thing, you've seen them all. So let's look at his face up close, shall we? So here we go with a super-duper close-up look, and as I was moving it for this... You know, I have to say, it is so awesome to see this figure standing here. I, I Like I said, I've wanted a Marty McFly figure for so long, and this thing looks amazing. I can't imagine them doing it any better. And with Hot Toys, they always come out with another one that blows the first one away, so we'll see. And, okay, if you look here, you'll see his blue jean jacket, and on there he has three pins. And as you can see there, he's got the guitar. I guess that's like a guitar pick-like thing. And I had to move the coat so you could see the other one where it says Art and Revolution. And that is awesome! Very, very cool. Back when people wore buttons on their blue jean jackets. Ah, those days were the best. And then up here you will see the red t-shirt poking out there, which he wore through a lot of the movie. I mean, you always saw him in either that, the white shirt, or the blue jean jacket, or the vest. Uh, it was just, it, like I said, you can take off layers and have different looks for him for the whole movie. Up here you will see his Michael J. Fox mouth. And a lot of people criticize that it's just black inside there and you can't see his teeth. But honestly, I don't know. I think it looks fine. I, that's, that's the expression he had through the whole movie. I mean, really, he was always kind of bewildered. So I just think that looks good. There's his nose. There's the little speckling on his face. And then up here you will see his eyes. And they look so good. And I love his eyebrows. I love how he's kind of got furrowed eyebrows or whatever there in the middle. Like he's concentrating and going, oh, that's heavy, Doc. But you know what? I think that looks awesome looking. Working our way up here, you'll see his forehead. And then up here, oh, man, his hairline looks really good. They did a good job on that, the way his hair's there. Looks very cool indeed. Now, a lot of people criticize this figure, like I say, and I, I don't understand. I mean, I know there are people out there that can sculpt their own figures and they can do, you know, perfect Looks like he's got a scar there on his nose. Does he have a scar on his nose? Huh. I mean, am I seeing things? Does it not look like he has a scar on his nose? I've got to look at that. I know I had heard an interview with Michael J. Fox a long time ago, and he talked about how he played hockey and, and all this stuff. Is it just, maybe it's just, okay, there we go. I thought, well, no, because they see it's there again. But he had said that he had played hockey and he got his nose messed up really bad and had to have it fixed or whatever. And it looks like he's got a scar on his nose. Maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe it's just my figure, but I see a scar. Like I said, I'm, I could be hallucinating, but it looks like a scar there because it's not part of his eye, like where his um, eye gets sunken in there underneath. So I don't know. I'm going to look at a still of him later and see if he's got a scar on his nose. But anyway, I think that's awesome. And if that's, and if that's an attention to detail that Hot Toys found as they were sculpting him, holy crap, Hot Toys, you're awesome for seeing that. Wow. I think that's awesome. Otherwise, mine played hockey a little too much and hurt his nose. But anyway, there he is looking very cool. Now, a lot of people like to criticize, too, and say that it looks there's not enough features on him and stuff. But he was smooth-faced back then. Come on, man. He was young. You know? He looked young. I don't know how old he was. He's probably in his 20s. But, you know, he still looked really, really young. He looked like a kid. But anyway, there's his hands looking very cool. Looking down here at his shoes. Check that out, man. That's awesome. 
That is so cool. All that's missing is the little red swoosh. And that is cool. Yeah, I'm gonna look up the look up his his nose there and see if he's got a scar there or if I'm just seeing things. That's weird, man. Now I just looked online to see if I could find any good pictures of his nose or his profile or whatever, and I couldn't find any pictures that showed a scar. But I don't know, man. Maybe I'm seeing things. I don't know. Maybe it's not there. But if it's there, that's awesome that they put it in. If not, I'm sorry. I saw a defect in the sculpt or shadow and made me think it was a scar. But that is awesome indeed. But anyway, here's the figure here. And to show off how small he is, Tony Stark isn't a very big figure as it is. I mean, uh, but you can see here, next to Tony Stark, Michael J. Fox is pretty short. They're both on stands that are the same size. In fact, he's on a Tony Stark stand. But uh, you can see just how much smaller Michael J. Fox's figure is. And I think that is so cool. And like I said, when you put, pick it up, you know, you can tell how small it is. Uh, it feels light and all that stuff. Still a great figure, but you can still feel the difference. After handling Hot Toys for so long, you can just feel, you know, the weight to them and stuff like that. And this one being so much smaller just... Feels like a tiny little figure. And I think that is awesome with that attention to detail. That is cool. So there's my very quick, even though 16 minutes is not quick, uh, review of the Marty McFly Hot Toys 1-6 scale figure. And I would have made it a little bit more extensive, but I'm kind of hard-pressed for time. <laughs> get it time but anyway yeah this figure looks amazing and like i said there's tons of reviews for this figure already and all i can do is give you my opinion on it and you know what am i going to say about a little camcorder oh look it looks just like the real thing it does you know i've already seen the stuff up close and it looks amazing this is the reason why i got the figure though is to see you know this figure up close he is awesome and i really really hope that hot toys make some more versions of marty you know the future marty and this and that and blah 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 and you know the old west marty would be cool too the clint eastwood version i think that would be awesome but you know what i love it if this is the only one they make i'm 100 percent satisfied and i hope they make a doc brown but it doesn't look like they're going to so who knows i'm sure they'll get you know uh, christopher lloyd's um likeness rights eventually and stuff like that we'll get one come on guys don't don't panic besides even if we don't there's so many unlicensed you know figures out there that get made every day so don't worry man somebody's gonna make one that'll be up to par with this one and it looks awesome so i hope you liked today's review of the marty mcfly hot toys figure even though i didn't go into all the stuff but like i said you know there's a billion reviews so branch out and see somebody else's reviews because they're all better than mine so until next time tune in for more Ooh, reviews <laughs> come on Felsberg. come on yeah i know your pain i've got the huey lewis song stuck in my head now too oh it's all right huey lewis was pretty good